you love music, why not make it your career? You don't know where to start? Well, that's why we created Music Industry Essentials with NYU's Clive Davis Institute, featuring experts from Billboard and other masters like DJ Clark Kent, Carrie Gordon, and Ryan Leslie. This online certificate helps you to understand the industry and gives expert insight to guide your passions into a career. Learn more or share with a music club at yellowbrick.co dash music you. What really lights your creative fluid on fire? Man, I, I have a passion for this. Now what? It's a peek behind the curtain. It's a glimpse on the other side of the velvet rope. And you're hearing stories from people who are doing exactly what you may want to do. The music industry is a dynamic business. And this online course from NYU's Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music is going to cover all aspects, including production, music business, performance, history, and emerging media. It will prepare you to take the next step in your career in music, whether you're on the business side or creative side, or an entrepreneur blending the two. There's more opportunity for artists to make a living making music than ever before. This type of program could be so useful for a young person who's not even sure of the area they want to get into music. It really exposes you to two choices. There are so many different roles to play in this business. Just jump in and find people who are doing what you want to do. You really have to learn everything about the business to find out if that's what you really want to pursue. Do your homework. Do you have the leverage? You can articulate yourself in a manner that people will have to pay attention to you. Because what you think you want to do when you start out might end up becoming something entirely different. Really study the field you want to get into. And then when you feel like you've got it, study 10 times harder, and then when you feel you got it after that, start to try to figure it out, because you're never gonna be prepared. Don't think about the money, man. It's about mastering yourself. It's invaluable, the information that you get through a course like this, from people who have done it. You never work a day in your life because you're doing what you love. The music industry is a dynamic business, and this online course from NYU's Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music is going to cover all aspects, including production, music business, performance, history, and emerging media. It will prepare you to take the next step in your career in music, whether you're on the business side or creative side, or an entrepreneur blending the two. There's more opportunity for artists to make a living making music than ever before. This type of program could be so useful for a young person who's not even sure of the area they want to get into music. It really exposes you to two choices. There are so many different roles to play in this business. Just jump in and find people who are doing what you want to do. It's invaluable, the information that you get through a course like this. You never work a day in your life because you're doing what you love. Hello, everyone. Welcome to NYU and Yellow Brick's first webinar to ask two music stu you students anything you'd like about the Music Industry Essential Certificate. So we are so stoked to be here today with everyone and so happy to see all of you interested in the program and just wanting to expand your career options. It's really awesome. And we see in the chat where you guys are coming from. That's so awesome. You guys, Italy, we got Austin, Texas, Los Angeles. Oh my goodness, just everyone from everywhere. That's so awesome. So excited to be here with you guys. All right, so this webinar will be led by the two of us and as well as you guys asking all that you want to know about the program here. Um, so just first, we're gonna start off with introductions on who we are and you know what we do and stuff. So Carlos, if you wanna start off with your introduction. <laughs> Carlos, you good? I am so sorry. I think we're having. Oh no! <laughs> okay, how about I'll just start off with my introduction, and then once. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um. <laughs> oh, 
No, go okay, ahead. Go sorry. Ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm Carlos. I'm a senior at Cal State California State University, Fullerton. I'm a business and administration major and um, at entertainment and hospitality management emphasis. Um, right now, I'm currently not working because due to the pandemic, I'm one of those people who lost their jobs. Um, but I do work uh, for my radio program at my university. So weekly, I have a radio show that airs, you know, I went to nine at 8 p.m. and it, show, it airs weekly on Fridays at 8 p.m. Um, and with that, I took it to focus on school and focus on, you know, what I want to do in my career path. And this program has helped me so, so much. And I, I can't wait to see where I end up. Um, I do want to end up maybe either working as a radio personality for either Sirius, Sirius XM, BBC, or, you know, just anywhere fun, um, anything, anything with music, um, or do some a &R as well. Um, but yeah, tell us about you, Stacey. All right. So my name is Stacey Morales. I am currently a senior at the University of California, Irvine, and I am majoring in East Asian cultures with a Korean emphasis. So as you see, that's nothing to do with music or entertainment at all. Um, and but what I want to do with that is mostly focus with K-pop and, you know, working in the K-pop industry with their touring and, you know, just music management, anything of the sort. I want to bring K-pop to more of you know, just to more places, you know, as it's been brought to the US, I want to bring it to places like Mexico and other Spanish speaking countries. Because um, I am studying Korean right now. And I know, you know, a bit of Spanish and of course, English. So I would love to do that. Um, and right now for occupation wise, uh, I used to work um, in all kind of like more entertainment side stuff, obviously, you know, the pandemic, we're here now. <laughs> Um, but I currently work at a at escape room. So just you know, trying to do some entertainment here and there, but mostly I am a full-time student. Um, and just to let you guys know about like how, how we know each other, me and Carlos, we've actually known each other since high school. Uh, we met, I think it was my, I think we met sophomore year, but we started getting closer my junior year and he was a year older. So he was a senior. Uh, we were both in the drama club, <laughs> you know, doing shows together. He was in tech. I was one of the actresses. And then we actually met up later in life, you know, because after he graduated, we kind of um, separated and went different ways. And we met up like four years later at a community college. And we were just like, oh my gosh, hey, nice to see you. And then we actually found out that we're, pursuing the same field and we never we never knew about it <laughs> and we're just like oh my gosh that's so awesome so that we definitely reconnected between that and we're really excited to be here we're excited you know rekindle our friendship over yeah. music we love to see it <laughs> so yeah. now the oh go ahead oh go oh sorry and i would <laughs> say yeah and we rekindled and i even got stacy a job at the radio station i used to work at 95.9 the fish and <laughs> Again, due to the pandemic, we, we both were let go. But I've also had the honor for working for Live Nation as a VIP lounge host and a guest service attendant, um, which is basically just a you know customer service associate who goes around, helps guests with any troubles or issues, um, check in VIP or guests who need to you know get to their seats or the, we, we had a lounge and you know, it's fancy area for them. Um, I also had the opportunity to apply or I, I did get the invite to apply for Insomniac's ground control. Um, and I got accepted and everything, we were ready to go. And then my first concert was coming and then what happened? We all, the industry got shut down. And <laughs> I'm so sad because I, I wanna go do it. And it just seems like a great thing to do. Um, and I currently also do some artist uh, management for a producer named Reprise. Um, so I work on that, I do my radio show. So kind of keeping busy right now. And I'm excited for the industry to uh, open up again, see where where we end up, maybe Stacey and I collaborate again because we do. I do. Um, I do have her tonight on my show. We do. We have a special East Asian cultures uh, episode. We're playing anything from K-pop, J-pop, J-rock. You know, it's it's gonna be fun. And we'll talk more about that later. And we'll yeah. Give you more and uh, Stacey even introduced me to a little bit of K-pop promos. So uh, <laughs> Stacey introduced me to do. That. I mean, I dabbled a little bit in that too. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. So we're just going over um, like things we've done in the industry thus far before joining the program. Uh, so as you heard, like Carlos has done like a lot of stuff, you know, with Live Nation and just like a lot of concert stuff. And as for myself, I focus primarily in K-pop promotion. So I've promoted over 15 shows for K-pop in the greater Los Angeles area as a volunteer leading, you know, just leading street teams, leading teams of like five to seven people of just, um, you know, just putting up posters everywhere, posting on social media and everything. And then I've worked about like, uh, like five to six shows as well. Um, my last show being Stray Kids, if you guys know K-pop, it was Stray Kids at the Microsoft Theater. And that was the very last show right before the pandemic hit. I had a show on March 15th actually. And then that was like literally when everything shut down. So that was very sad, but it's fine. Uh, and along with uh, concert work, I've also done um, improv, um, not personally, I don't do improv. No. She's <laughs> but funny I though. She's funny. You're funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny, but I'm not improv funny. Um, but I've also worked at an improv club doing box off assistant. Like I was just making sure I was constantly in live entertainment. I just need to be in, you know, in the environment, whichever. Um, and so we both had an idea on what we wanted to do, but we also got stuck because of the pandemic and it's a more, of a music focus in our work and to secure what we know in the music industry. So uh, this is exactly how we got into this program as you're all probably curious to know more about, of course. <laughs> so I found this program uh, while scrolling on LinkedIn actually and just saw how inclusive the program was and everything that they offered. So I immediately signed up and got accepted a day later. Um, and I've been posting about it on Instagram because like I do, that's literally, I just post everything about what I've been doing within my career and like my way there. So I've obviously had to show that I'm in this awesome music program. And Carlos, that's when Carlos texted me and asked me like what I was doing because he seemed interested in Hunt, right, Carlos? Yeah, I saw her post it on LinkedIn and Instagram. And, you know, on LinkedIn, you see it so professional and, you're, and she's like, you received the certificate from NYU and it's powered by Billboard and Yellow Brick. And I'm like, wow, that's, this is legit. Like, this is a cool certificate and it would look good on my resume, you know? Um, and then on Instagram, she made it seem like so fun. She's like, oh, I'm going to learn about music and this program. Uh, she sent me the link to, to one of those videos you probably just saw. And I was like, let's do it. And so, you know, two days later, or I think the next day I also applied in and I got reply like two days and the next day I got my information and I was there. I was signed up. Um, it was just great. <laughs> so, and as you can see, this program has stuck with us and we knew it could do something for our careers. And this is, this is what it's done so far. So me and Carlos are going to list a couple of like good, um, just good things that, have, that it's done for us. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. So and since that. we're both, we both signed up like at the same time, she signed up a little bit like a month before me, um, but we really encourage each other now. And I'm like, oh, are you on this assignment yet? Like I'm a little, I'm a little lost or I need a little help. Um, but because of the program, like she said, we got some great perks. Like I got my show up and running and I had the confidence to, you know, build my brand as a whole. But I've also received so many connections. Like one of the biggest connections um, you can make with the program. Um, you also get invited to a private Facebook group that allows you to connect with all current and past uh, Music U students even though you're working at your own pace. Um, you can ask for help, um, chat, or even plug in your accomplishments. Like if you have a new song or you need someone like a graphic design. And that was for me. I found a graphic designer and he's going to help me, you know, find a new cover art for my producer, uh, Reprise. And that leads to the next, next reason is just networking, you know. Networking is so great with this program. It is incredible like I can t definitely you know speak on this you guys with networking and through the connections that you make you're able to see just all the different networking opportunities that I, I mean I have found countless webinars and internship opportunities because of the connections I've made through this program and you know now I feel like I'm more established in my work relationships because I mean through this program I found the current internships that I'm in now like I found um, Culture Fusion Agency uh, I'm that's a music marketing agency I found an internship through them and I've been leading their TikTok page and just doing you know a couple promotions with them I found a touring webinar which helped me with my tour management and found mentors through there so that is where uh, Yellow Bricks um, program is where I found all these resources because I found other people who were involved in them. So like the grand networking opportunities that they give you is just 
this is where it jump started. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's simply amazing. Yeah, and with all those resources, like you, you prepare yourself and it's something to do while we prepare um, for the industry to rise up again, you know, because it's all closed down or rating. We, we have seen the little adjustments like the park and rave and like the um, staggered selected time concerts. Like we'll see how 2021 ends up, but it is dis disappointing to see our music industry struggling through this time, but it doesn't mean it's gone. We've seen artists revolutionize the industry by having some virtual concerts such as Billie Eilish, Blackpink and all those um, areas that I just mentioned. Once the pandemic ceases, we will be prepared and ready to head into the music world with the help of this certificate teaching us everything we need to know or to harden your skills and see where your specialty relies. Mm -hmm. And then with the program in itself, as you know, is sponsored by NYU and Billboard Music, you know, two big powerhouses in the music industry. And so the, it's being led and taught by other powerhouses provided by the big names in the industry, um, as you saw in the video earlier. So like you're getting one-on-one, -on -one, you know, personal videos on exactly what this instructor is, you know, that's what they know. That's they're in the industry and they give you all this information, all of these resources for you to understand both the artist side and the business side. So even if you're an artist and you and you know, you know, you write music, you make your music and stuff, but you have no idea what your manager does. This is this is exactly for you. And if you're on the management side and business side, and you kind of like don't understand how your artist like writes the music and stuff, this is for you. Like it provides both aspects, so you understand the whole, you know, the whole thing about the music industry. Yeah, and like Stacey just said, the assignments are different for everybody, and the videos can be a little confusing to some, but. Some of you are like, oh, I get this, this is easy. Um, but it doesn't matter your expertise level. Like any industry, we all have specialties and some may excel in music production and some may excel in editing or visuals or simply like you like the behind the scenes work, scenes work and like to strategize and to market that, the marketing aspect, um, which is why some of those uh, assignments may seem harder than others. But that's because they are curated to challenge yourself and challenge you and see how far you can excel and to find your passion. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So now that we've given you a couple of insight of, you know, what the program consists of and, you know, what it can provide you, we can, um, we can also talk about just the questions, any questions that you guys have specifically about the assignments, um, about the program financially, like anything you want to ask, this is now your guys' this time. So you can go ahead. Yeah, and there's there's a couple of assignments, like I mentioned, like there's one for writing a song, one you have to uh, set up a media, social media strategy, one you have to set up, a, I think it's a, a floor plan for an actual concert, um, one's a history lesson, critique. So there's a bunch of different assignments, you know, and it's just so fun. I had a hard time with them. <laughs> The writing the song because I am not a songwriter at all so <laughs> writing that was a little difficult it took me maybe like a week and a half two weeks to actually do because I was just lost and what the prompt asks you is to, to look within yourself and see what song you want to write and it's just it's a great assignment um, mm -hmm. but yeah let's look in the Q&A and see what we can we can see or see what we can answer <laughs> all right so we have a lot of questions oh my goodness it's really exciting. We have some in the chat and also the Q&A part. Um, so I'm gonna start with the Q&A. All right, so Kirkley Silverman says, or asks, what types of projects do you do in the program in terms of music technology and production? Um, so later on, the there's six courses and each course provides like a couple of projects within them. And there's one project that I'm super excited to do and you get to build your own stage. <laughs> and I was like, when I saw that in the curriculum, I was like, what do you mean build my own stage? <laughs> <laughs> and you actually get to like do like a 3D model rendering. Like they give you a website and they provide you like resources on how to do so. Um, but you get to like literally set up your own stage based on the persona that you provided yourself. And like, just based on like music influences and stuff and just see like how it would go. Um, I haven't done it yet. Um, cause me and Carlos are both still midway through the program. So we're just kind of, we're currently fully immersed in it. Um, but there's a lot, uh, of other things that they can provide as well. 
Um, I think we can provide a little like link or PDF of like the full rundown of, you know, the programs and stuff. So we'll definitely get that out there. And there's also like, like optional um, assignments you can do like to, you know, if you want to go above and beyond, um, there is a section where you can like, produce your own song and upload it um, as part of your project. So if you're looking for in terms of that, like terms, technology and producing, um, yeah, there is an assignment where you can write your own song and, you know, get critiqued on that. Mm -hmm. All right. I see a lot of people asking about the scholarship program. Um, Gilbert Grubbenar has just sent in a link about where you can apply. So you apply for the scholarship before you apply for the program and it, you, it specifies which program you want the scholarship for. So make sure you, you specify exactly which one. And then they can provide you um, off of, I forgot the percentages, but they, can, they give you a good amount of money. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think it all depends on, you know, your, your status and where, or everyone's different. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Perfect. there is help and you, know, you can get it. Yeah. So yeah, definitely apply. Me and Carlos both applied for a scholarship program and we both got accepted. So as long as you, you know, just fill it out and to the best of your ability and just try it out. But yes, um, if you guys need I the link. I see one. I can answer. Okay. Um, Joshua, Joshua asked, how can I find more opportunities to put myself out there? Um, again, on the Facebook um, page, people will post a bunch of um, like internships and jobs and like, or if anybody's looking to connect. So there is constant like feed and communication of opportunities for, for you to learn more and to grow your skills. Mm -hmm. And I think there's even a LinkedIn page you can follow like Yellow Brick has one and yeah, they post some things too. And just generalized, um, if you guys are also want to ask like generalized music industry questions, you can go ahead and ask those as well. Um, how can I find more opportunities to put myself out there? You just really, especially in this pandemic, like this is the most I've progressed in my career is in this pandemic because Yeah, everyone, which is really weird. <laughs> yeah, it's really very weird. <laughs> but like um, everyone is home right now. Everyone is home willing to mentor you, willing to uh, you know, give you any tips. So like go on LinkedIn and go search up these LinkedIn. people that are interested in the same thing as you. And like, like we've been saying before, like the, the Facebook group that Yellow Brick provided for us, since everyone is focused in the music industry, that's where everyone puts out their stuff and you can connect mm -hmm. with everybody and, you know, ask like, Hey, you were working on this. Let me, let's work on this together. And um, a lot of people, post, there's people like, constantly looking for singers to collaborate on songs um, there's people looking for graphic designers, like I mentioned, people even looking for video production or video producers or video editors so they can make a music video. And I can't do that. So I might one day have to go in there and be like, I need a video videographer for this, please. Um, but yeah, like Stacey mentioned, LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn, go get one. Like go build your profile because there's so many opportunities on LinkedIn. Um, I just applied for an internship with Song Trust and I'm Hopefully I get to hear back from them soon, but you know, I'll, I was lucky to see that because Songtrust is a really cool company and I'm excited to see what they have to say. Yeah, right. Um, and so there's another question more about the curriculum. Is a curriculum self-paced or on a deadline basis? Asked by Brent, Brendan. It is self-paced. You have an entire, the only deadline is that you have a year to complete it. But as long as you do all the assignments within the allotted year, you can, you get your certificate. And in terms of if you don't finish it within a year, there's like a, there's a fee with e within each month that gets added onto your account that you have to pay. But I, I promise you these, um, these assignments are not that heavy and they all consist of like short, like two to three, six minute videos within each course. Um, or like a lot of videos within each course, but they're very easy. You can watch them as you're eating. You can watch them as, you know, you're just laying in bed. Like, um, cause there's another question I think that said, Carol Brown asked how intense um, coursework. I do want to add, you can ask for an extension on the year. If you, you know, if you need the extension, you would just um, call or email um, support group and ask them for an extension. And you do have to pay for the extension, but it's a different rate than the, the year that you pay. And yes, to add to um, the next question, um, each module is maybe like two to three hours, just depending on how hard you focus. The assignments can take you 
I know some assignments can, for me, I will look at the assignment and maybe a couple days later, I'll go back and say, okay, now I know I have an idea. So I'll, I'll start working on it and stop and then come back a few days again, because like, I like to challenge myself and I wanted to see how far I can go and how far I can push my skills. So I kind of take a little bit on the assignments, like a week or two on each one. And there's, I want to say like four to three, like assignments slash meeting assignments for each of the six modules. Mm. Yep. All right. So I guess someone else also asked how much time are you allotted to finish each project assigned? That's just all on you. However long mm -hmm. there's one assignment. As long as oh, finish yeah. the whole thing within one year is you, you know, if you want to bust it out in one week before it's due, like your year is up, be my guess. But um, I think I'm three or four months in now and I'm halfway. So mm -hmm. I'm on a good pace. <laughs> yeah. Like I finished projects in three hours and the other took me two weeks just because I just took that long. So <laughs> again, the song one, the writing the song one, I think that, I think that took me at least two to three weeks to be honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, was like, I can't write a song and I kind of got mad I was like I can't write a song and so I kind of just you know did the, the close of the laptop and I walked away I was like I'll come back to this later yeah and that's the one that took me like three hours <laughs> see so it's all um, one. um okay Morgan asks is that a calendar year from whenever you start the program yes so whenever you get enrolled and get accepted that's a year from when you start so like I started in May and Carlos started in June right Yes, June 1st, I think it was mine. So yeah, we we both have different start and end dates. So whenever you're ready to do it and jump in, you're good to go. I see this question that is interesting for both of us. Um, could this program apply to live theater, like the musical theater or opera industries? And I want to say yes, because there's music in um, live theater. You know, someone's going to need to do the board operating. Someone's going to need um, a vocal coach. Someone's going to need um, what else you need in the live theater? Uh, there's just tech, um, music, music tech. Um, yeah, I, I assume so. We were both in drama and I've done some light work. I've done some music work. Uh, so yeah, all the knowledge in music just helps. It makes you more credible too. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing is that everyone's asking like, does this work for this part of the music industry? Does this work for this part of the music industry? Like this is a good basis for you to understand all components of the music industry. Like the very first part, very first courses is learning about the history of like where music came from, where did it start? Like um, where are the origins of music? And then it goes more into what is a producer? What does this producer do? So this, this program, even though I, me and Carlos both have worked in live entertainment, we know what concerts are like. We know what people do at concerts, but we took this program in order to get like the full picture to really not not go in there, I'm not not ignorantly, but like we now like now we're trying prepared. to understand, yeah, prepared. Like we understand where this music comes from and why people are working so hard to get it out there. Because without the music being produced, we don't have tours. <laughs> we don't have the concerts to work, you know. So it all starts from somewhere. Um. So in terms of if this works for any part of the music industry, yes, because you understand where it all comes from. And say you're working in the theater and there's one person who needs help on something and you took this course and you're like, oh, I learned about this on the music industries course. Like, I know what to do. Like, I know how to write a floor plan. I know how to do the strategy plan, you know? Um, and you can shine, step up and shine because you're prepared and you have the knowledge for it. So, yeah. Yep. Um, so people are asking about like how like impactful this certificate is or can it help be can it be used in any way on your resume so as you know like this program is being ran by like it's in collaboration with NYU and Billboard so those are two big names already and so you have a certificate from NYU and Billboard um it's yeah it may not be like a degree you know a bachelor's degree but it's something extra you did to add on to what you already know so it's showing the effort that you put in to know more about this certain industry. And it does have reputable cause. Like people will see this, this certificate and be like, oh, uh, DJ Clark can't talk that. I know this person knows what they're talking about, you know? So it's mm -hmm. it, there is credibility within the certificate. Like th that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it shows you took the time to learn and do, you know, 
familiar familiarized yourself with the industry because no one's going to hire someone who doesn't really know anything about the industry with this you know you're like i know a good amount mm -hmm. um and i see this question it says could this help with the music festival industry and i say yes because it's helping me and that's where i want to go it's helping me learn the background stuff um like royalties, copyright, uh, the background, social media, um, to help my producer, you know, uh, further along in his career and hopefully make it one big day or make it big one day. And um, so, yeah, I think this is great because it helped me produce my radio show because it gave me the confidence and um, helped me build my brand now. And I featured artists that are electronic as well. So, yeah, it, it will help. All right, so I have a question. Someone has a question about uh, one of the assignments themselves, and they want to know if it, um, you know, how we observed it. So Evan says, for the third assignment, there's an assignment about creating your own persona using the Myers Briggs 16 personality test and the type of artist you're trying to be. How accurate? How accurate was it for you? Um, do you want to do it? I, I can do it. You can do it. Okay. Um, yeah. Actually, that was a that was kind of a fun one for me. Um, where is it? Yeah. Um, let me share mine. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, second. he pulling it up. Yeah, I'm pulling it up. Oh shoot, he's giving you real examples. <laughs> um, I really wanted to make it as who I am as a person, who I like as a music, and um, a little bit by myself. And I think the the test was. Correct. I am an introvert, introvert, extrovert kind of person. Um, I like to be around people when I like to, and I like to be alone when I like to. So, yeah, I think it, um, it was a great test. Um, here is mine. So, I say I'm very selective on the things I do for fun, for, for myself and loved ones. There has been a meaning or connection with it for me to actually participate. And you know, the results confirmed that for me. And here I showed a couple um, photos that I love. Like I love Blackpink, I love Halloween, I love anything alien, I love Disney. Um, I used to work at Disney and Goofy is one of my favorite, favorite characters. So you just, you know, show, your, not show yourself, but like present yourself to friends and your fellow um, colleagues. I don't think it was a, it's a, it could be a challenging assignment for you if you don't really like thinking about yourself or are self-conscious about yourself, but this definitely does help you um, open up and be more uh, uh, open. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that, Carlos. People are like, oh my gosh, did we see Disney and Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you did. <laughs> Allison is one of my favorite producers and, you know, hopefully one day I'm, like I said, I want to be venue coordinator and an artist relation. So hopefully one day I can get her to come to the venue I work at and, you know, I can be like, yeah, that's Allison. Yeah. I hired her. <laughs> His is definitely more like presentable. Mine was, mine just has a lot of like pinks and aesthetic and anime on it. <laughs> I yeah. just like this is who I am. Like that, that's it's that's just who you I'm. are. It's not asking you to <laughs> make up a fake person, but like there are artists who not make a fake person, but Lady Gaga has her her alter ego as um she did that man guy, right? I forget. Um and then she has Joanne and then she has, you know, the iconic Lady Gaga, like art pop girl. Um so and David Bowie, who mm -hmm. else? Queen. Mm. Oh. oh, speaking of assignments, um, there is someone that asked, let me see if I can find it. Um, I see one question really quick that says, how did I find about your program? I found it on LinkedIn originally because Stacey posted. Um, so you can probably, if you follow people like Billboard or Yellow Brick or Culture Fusion or, you know, those big names in um, the music industry, you'll find out about these find out about these opportunities. Yeah, sorry, I'm also replying to Q&A like chat as well. <laughs> I, 
I keep meaning to go over to look at the chat, but I keep looking at the Q&A. I'm like, <laughs> go ahead, look at the chat. I'll take over now. <laughs> yeah, type, respond to people. There's a lot of people talking to you. <laughs> um, okay, okay, so so I'll just answer these questions live as well. Um, there's someone that asked that. Oh my gosh, now I now I lost it. Oh no. Okay. And I I'll see do um, eligibility requirements. I think it's. Um, Anybody can sign up as long as you have an email um, and you're dedicated and, you know, and obviously you pay for the fees, but anybody's allowed to join. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Then I'll just answer these ones that I see. All right. So people are asking me about the K-pop industry <laughs> and like how to get in it. Um, so basically it's really, it's, non-existent right now obviously um but when it when tours were up and coming there was a lot of opportunities to go about it and the biggest thing i tell people is that when you see a k-pop show being announced there are promoters that obviously promote the the shows and you have to contact those promoters because usually like 90 percent of the time they will have opportunity volunteer opportunities for you guys to go ahead and uh street team or um street team or work the concert. Um, I provide a lot of this info on my TikTok. <laughs> so if you follow me on TikTok, we'll provide our socials later. I give it like step-by-steps on how to get into the K-pop industry as well. Um, so yeah, I'll give you guys that in a second. Let's answer more questions about the program. Um, how long do people usually take to finish the program? <sighs> I've seen people finish it in five months. Like seeing people finish the whole year people take more than a year i mean it all depends on on yourself too and life one um <laughs> i know i told myself i would work on it during my this past thanksgiving break but i was just so tired from like midterms and just i wanted to catch up on sleep so i didn't even end up looking at it this past week um so you you do take breaks life can come up and you know you can't get to it like every week you can't dedicate to a solid schedule and that's why it's so great that it's so flexible of course you can go at your own pace mm -hmm. correct all right let's see is there any more program questions i'm looking at the q a um are we able to connect with any of the professors who taught the course so far, I have not reached out to any of the professors, but there are, I think I remember, this was like when I first like applied and got in, there was an office hour being held, an office hour webinar being held literally the day after. And I was like, ooh, I'll just join in. And I think um, Yellow Brick webinars, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was like one of the, one of the instructors or someone that helps out within it. Um, yes, there we go. Yeah, 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 webinar opportunities, yeah. So there is some, uh, they they personally talk to you over the webinars to um, you know ask any questions you had about the assignments. Oh, there was one, okay, the assignments. How are they graded? Um, they're usually, they're graded on a pass, pass, no pass type of thing. Um, the feedback that you get is related to if your, if your stuff makes it on the gallery. <laughs> so when you submit your, your stuff, um, there's a gallery of other people's assignments where you get to see where, you know, how they did it. And you can see examples so you know exactly what you're getting into. Um, and, and if you make it onto the gallery, that means that you did an exceptional job and that this is how the project should be done. Um, but that's usually how it gets graded. And then... Yeah. And you can always um, go on the Facebook page and ask for help if you're lost. I know a lot of people go on the page and ask, um, can I see some examples? And there's some examples um, when the prompt is shown so you can see past students' works, but the Facebook page is very, very resourceful because people are always on, people are always posting. I think I go on it like every day and I check and I'm like, oh, hey, what's, what's up today? Mm -hmm. The first assignment. Yeah, we can talk about the first assignment. Uh, James says he's yeah. stuck. Um, the first assignment. That one. Fine. You go. <laughs> it was, what did you yeah. do? You did. Um, I forgot what you did. I did J Rock. Like, I went into J Rock. 
and oh um, yeah that was really cool we did we did me and carlos did our, uh, we like we talked to each other we're like we don't know how to start this like what do we do you're basically just um so the first assignment is you have to you, you have to study up on a genre of music and where it originated from. So basically just pick any genre of music, anything you want. There's people have done uh, Latino pop, people have done R&B, like they've done big ranges of genres to so like, you know, the, yeah. the mini subsections. So you just- I did drum and bass. So yeah. <laughs> that's that. You don't even, it doesn't even have to be your favorite genre. It can just be basically anything. I love drum and bass. But it's not one of my favorites, but I wanted to learn more about it. I wanted to learn. Mm-hmm. I and I knew the the, sim, the simplicity of it, where it came from, like the UK and stuff. But I wanted to, you know, I chose mm-hmm. that to dive in more because that's what the project has for you. I um, mean, yeah, like, like Stacey mentioned, I've seen people do like hyper pop. I've seen people do K-pop. I've seen people do, um, yeah, like Spanish bands. So just anything, really. Yeah, anything, anything you, you want to learn exactly like even though i knew about j-rock already i dug deeper and saw what else is involved with j-rock and the and the the genre i went into was visual k so it's like this other genre of j-rock that goes like super glam and like super feminist or feminist a feminine type clothing it's like something i've never listened to before and i just dug deep to see like where it originated and how it started um so yeah we're glad glad we helped you out with that um all right. So, Carlos, how about you start off with this question? What did you expect from this program versus what have you actually gained and learned? I expected um, just, you know, like your average videos talking about the music industry. And I didn't really expect assignments like that, actually. Um, like when I did see the first assignment, I was like, oh, whoa, they really want us to like you know, try and they want us to, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Challenge ourselves. Um, yeah, and I, I didn't expect it <laughs> that each module was gonna take me, you know, two to three hours. I thought it was gonna be like a, just like a simple like 12 hour course. Um, mm-hmm. But from that I learned, even though I'm only halfway through, I learned the struggles of a person goes through writing a song. I've learned um, the history of music. I've learned um, how to, what was the third? <laughs> I've learned to, um, one thing. The critiques. <laughs> yeah. I got lost, I lost my train of thought. Um, but yeah, and the persona one, that one really helped me because um, in that time I was talking about making my radio show and I didn't know what, like genre or type of radio show I wanted to do. I know I did want it to be um, kind of spooky, kind of, you know, fun and eerie because I love Halloween. So I ended up with Spooky Hour and every week I read uh, one spooky story. I talk about a horror movie or, you know, just any movie and and I play some music. And all of October, I just had like a bunch of like Halloween related tracks and spooky songs and it was a great time. Mm-hmm. And you can hear one tonight with Stacy. So I that's what I gained from this. I got my radio show out of it. Yep. It's a like someone else mentioned, it seems like this program can really like break you out of your shell. And it definitely does. Like I've never yes. seen Carlos way more engaged in the music industry and what he's done with his radio show than before. Like, <laughs> like this program really like broke him out and he's just like ready to tackle anything, you know, involving that. Um, and then as for myself, like, I just feel more confident in knowing the industry and knowing like exactly the ins and outs of it. So that when people ask me, I'm like, yeah, I know this, 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 <laughs> like, you know, like it's just really, it's really helpful. I'm really grateful for this program and just what it's done for me and I, like what it's done for us. Like I've been recommending it to everyone that I come across that you know, maybe majoring in something that has nothing to do with the music industry and this certificate can just be a really good supplemental thing. Like, as you heard, like I'm majoring in East Asian cultures. That has nothing to do with (laughs) with anything music. It may have to do where I'm going, but it has nothing to do, you know, with uh, 
with anything related to the sort, but, you know, doing this program and having that certificate under my name can really help in terms of, you know, applying for internships and stuff. Like my, mar I have a marketing communications internship right now with UCI and, you know, I let them know that like, oh, I'm like taking this program about music and like I've learned a lot about touring and stuff. And like now they've asked me to like write articles about tour management, you know, even though I've never been on tour, but just because mm -hmm. I have this, this program to support me in it, like now I have more credentials in that. Yeah, and I, I'm now an ambassador for Yellow Break as well. And I got that opportunity from this program. Um, and I also see a question. I have much experience in the industry, but songwriting is not one of them. Um, will that be determinate? determined? Um, no, I I can't write songs. I'm not a musician. I I can I can't sing. I don't know. I can't I can't even write a poem. I can't do haikus. <laughs> so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, but I do have an ear and I know what good music should sound like. As long as you have a love for music and you know what kind of air you want to go to, you'll be fine. Um, and this program does help you. And you know, learning about that and learning about other aspects you may have not even known or just a further in depth about it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Um, so I see this question. What would you suggest for a person who wants to start working in the music industry? Apply to entry level positions or apply to internships? So there is, um, it is very scary trying to get into an industry where you have nothing to go into it with and you have like, you have little to no information. And I did not really have any, you know, any leverage to what I've done. I've just done, like I started street teaming here and there and stuff, but I definitely suggest that you start connecting, you start networking, you start seeking out people who are in the industry to go help you. And again, like I know we've said this countless of times, but when you gather in a community like Yellow Brick and their programs and where people are all interested in the same thing, the, the, ind the individual opportunities that you will find are infinitely like endless. There is so much that you can do, but it's on you to go pursue those things. Like if I just did, if I just sat in my room and not looked at LinkedIn and not try to do anything, like I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I wouldn't be as involved. Uh, Yellow Brick wouldn't have noticed my efforts to try to get this message out there, you know, and try to tell people about this program that tells you everything that you need to know. Like it's not just music. There's film programs. There's there's a program about fashion and shoes. Like <laughs> there's a program for video games, esports, like any obscure industry that you want to get into. Like this helps you get started in it, you know. And so. So if you wanna start working in the music industry, you gotta start somewhere and start learning about it. So that way you can connect with your professors, with your teachers and mentors, and they can help you get places. So you need to connect and just put yourself out there. Yeah. Yeah, just throw yourself out there, apply. Even if you think you're not qualified for like a certain internship or a job or like an entry-level job, apply because maybe the company could be like, that's fine. We can teach them how to do it. And, you know, they'll form you to what they want you to do. So, and you, you got the job. Um, but I do see a question in the chat and it says, are the assignments and tests hard to take? Um, as there are no like, tests, but there are response questions, like essay questions you can respond, or they have you respond to. Um, and there are short quizzes, um, but you do get the opportunity to retake them as many times as you want. Um, you do have to get 100% on all the quizzes for you to um, receive your certificate. So you you can't fail. <laughs> the only way you can fail is you don't finish within that year. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and you can retake the quizzes, yeah. You can retake those quizzes as many times as you want. Because <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm a perfectionist to begin with too. So I'm like, oh, that was 90%. Let me go do that again. <laughs> go get 100. <laughs> Yeah, and the questions aren't aren't hard. They're like three, like four multiple choice questions, um, a couple of true and false questions, and you know, short response ones as well. That's never too difficult. Okay. All 
Sorry, I'm answering questions in the Q&A as well. <laughs> um, all right. Is there any I other see this, questions? I see this one that says, I've been interested in the business of or technical and music production part of K-pop industry, but I was wondering from where I should start. I was thinking of taking computer sciences, computer science courses with business management to start. What do you think, Stacey, since you are our K-pop? I would say um, start with Street Team because that's how I started. Um, Stacey introduced me to that and I did, a, you know, the poster putting up, promote the cards, you know, go to businesses and have promote on your social medias. You know, that's always a good opportunity or a good way to get yourself in there because other companies will see it and say, oh, they're dedicated. They want to they wanna be in this industry. Yep. But let's hear more from Stacey. Um, the only technical side of K-pop that I know of is there's a lot of people that go in there that want to do, uh, photography and videography for K-pop. Um, and, and like, there's opportunities for that as well. Like you, I can't stress enough how you need to really go out there and find them. <laughs> and cause like, there's a lot of um, for example, like you can email the smaller production companies that are putting on concerts and be like, Hey, do you guys need videographers? Like I can offer my services and then they'll contact you back. Um, I have a, I have a connection where he, uh, he has a YouTube channel and it's not even, it's not that big, but he shows his interest in K-pop and he shows that he knows how to manage, you know, videography and stuff. And he was able to interview k-pop artists and you know that's where he's at now and i was able to get him an interview with a smaller k-pop artist because of my connections that i had with the k-pop productions you know so it's just all you need to really show yourself and show how dedicated you are to your craft and how dedicated you are to you know to do what you want to do so that's what i really suggest when when this pandemic is over you have your you have your certificate from yellow brick and just get out there and be like hey i know what i'm doing i i learned doors everything will open. <laughs> doors will open for you because people will know that you took the time while you were out um mm -hmm. and i do see this question do you guys know if copyright copywriting original music is important nowadays i've heard from some people that it is enough to just upload it uh, online um i know some sites like soundcloud you can upload like your own original music and anybody can hear it. But if you're trying to um, earn money from those songs you, you wanna um, upload, then yes, you should copyright it. You, if you're an independent artist, um, you can use sites like DistroKid. Um, I forgot the other one already. Um, like, but you do have to sign up for like BMI or ASCAP. So you do get, so you do monetize on your songs. Um, but if you just don't care, you just wanna upload it, then yeah, like SoundCloud, YouTube, all those sites will just let you upload songs mm -hmm. and you do learn more about that in the course you know you learn about trademarks or sorry copyright um royalties how we get paid how publishers get paid um the difference between a label and independent artist um uh, and to go back to your question um and if you are with the label the label will normally deal with that you know uh, uploading it and monetizing it and distribution of that money all right. All right. So we um, have about seven minutes left. Does anyone want to get like any last minute questions out there before we wrap it up and like just tell you um, like anything else that we need to Let's see. <laughs> For working in the K-pop industry, I've definitely thinking about learning Korean, but do you feel like that's a necessity? Yes, <laughs> it's a big one. I'm currently learning Korean as well, and it's I'm struggling. I <laughs> it's really really hard. Um, you don't like I will say, like there are opportunities out there that don't require you to learn Korean. But if you do know Korean, like you can get a job like that. Like for example, the last one of the concerts I worked, there was a girl who was a volunteer with me, and she was Korean, right? But she was just a volunteer. Like she was doing the stuff I was doing, just passing out wristbands and you know feeding the staff <laughs> you know it just wasn't like a lot but um then just because she knew korean she was talking to the production manager and the production manager gave her a job with the production company you know and i've seen that done with foreign people as well who know korean so if you want to get in the k-pop industry i do highly recommend that you get a you get a move on with learning korean 
um, and understanding just the basics. You know, I'm just trying to understand how to know, know how to say in front of that, put that over there and I'm hungry. <laughs> just like basic production, you know, work. Uh, thanks, Delilah. I would appreciate that help. I would love, you know, more help in Korean. <laughs> All right. I think there's a couple more questions. Um, there was one question um, I wanted to um, answer because um, she mentioned in the chat, um, I'm a pianist, composer, and instructor trying to take my business to the next level. I'm still going through the program and I'm at the place where I need to submit my video slash written project. I haven't experienced the robust opportunities that you talked about or networking opportunities. When does that start happening or what do I need to do more? Um, I would say if you don't have a, like an online profile, such as like an Instagram or a LinkedIn or a Facebook page, I would say make one of those because that is how you get um, your name out there, your brand out there. Um, and I'm not sure about that assignment you're talking about because I may have not reached that point. Um, so kudos to you because you're ahead of me. Um, but <laughs> I would say reach out um, to the Facebook page and ask the fellow colleagues for their um, insight as well. Because I'm sure everybody's willing to help. If you're not willing to help, you're not part of the industry because we're all a team, we're all a team here. We're all one big industry. We all love music. All right, uh, you guys mentioned you must get 100% to pass on all the tests, quizzes, how difficult. Oh, like we were saying that, um, like you can retake the quizzes as much as you like because they tell you which ones you got wrong. And so you can go back and correct it. So it's super easy to get a hundred percent. We were just saying how like every time we miss one, we like we're perfectionists and we want to get a hundred percent. Like, I don't think you really need to get a hundred percent to pass, to go ahead. As long as you're like passing, you know, but yeah, it's not difficult at all. So don't you worry about that. Um, were we going to wrap up or do we have like time for one more? Um, I guess we can just, there's one question I've been seeing repeatedly, um, working in live entertainment in the challenging yeah. environment. That was what I was going to mention. Yeah. Um, when I worked at Live Nation, I, I worked at two different venues. Um, obviously the number one uh, issue is always going to be the customer care and making sure your guest, you know, is happy being at the concert. And some people arrive and they don't know, they didn't know their seat was all the way over there because, you know, their husband purchased it or, you know, things like that come up or uh, I paid for the upgrade. Why am I not getting my t-shirt? Why am I not getting, you know, X, Y, and Z? So you always have to be um, aware and be knowledgeable of those things, you know? You're going to get questions like, mm -hmm. where's the bathroom? And like, obviously you will know that, but then you'll get questions like, oh, where's the VIP lounge and where can I check in? You know, and if you're just like a normal um, ticket scanner, like some some of them may not know, um, but it's always good because you don't want to be that person who's like, oh, I don't know, you know, and then you kind of look, oh, okay, that's weird. But yeah, I think that's one of the big challenges. Um, do you have anything to add to that? Um, um, and I applied for Live Nation just by going, um, I'll, I'll drop the link in a second. You continue, Stacey. <laughs> No worries. Um, the only challenge is just making sure you get a good night's rest uh, before the day of because you're working all day and get ready to talk a lot because you will, like I think Carl said, like you will get asked the same question over and over again. And especially at K-pop, like all the fans will ask, um, <laughs> they'll ask like, oh, where do we line up? Oh, where's the merch? Where's the merch? Where's the merch? I'm like, it's inside. <laughs> and it's, it's a lot, but um. But yeah, uh, so I think that will wrap up this webinar, you guys. Um, before you leave, we're going to share our socials because I think some people asked for that. Um, and so we'll share it in the chat, Carlos. You can go ahead and share yours as I'm um, talking. Do you want to go first? Um, I'm going to share my screen one more time. Do you want to oh. share with them the login? Um, I'll share with you guys how the screen looks when you log in. Um, this is it. So you go to courses.yellowbrick.co slash login. You'll put in your email, your password, you'll log in. And here's a Facebook group that you'll see that you can sign up. And then here's where you click to get onto the program. And here's just like a little intro video and all the course links. So 
money matters in music that's like all about like distribution of money and all that stuff um yeah. so it's easy to navigate it's not hard you know go back to course main page you know, i'm currently right here now it's not loading but yeah <laughs> Here you'll see like different videos and here's a prompt one. So you get like different videos. Um, yep. And here's like assignments. So it tells you like very detailed instructions on how to like upload it and stuff. Um, but yeah, and you can see gallery, like other people's works. You always have reference, so you're never alone. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Carlos, go ahead and drop your socials in the chat um, so people know where to get it. Uh, so just a couple of announcements, like tonight at 8 p.m., if you go to titanradio.org, we will be- um, You can hear us again if you wanna go through another again. hour with us. <laughs> <laughs> but this will be more uh, East Asian, you know, East Asian music focus. If you want to listen to K-pop on the radio and J-Rock, you can go ahead and head over there. Uh, we dropped our socials in the chat. Please connect with us on LinkedIn, especially. Uh, we would love to connect with you guys and just learn about more opportunities that we can give you guys um, or like give each other, actually. You know, we can give and take. It's a give and take relationship. <laughs> um, and if any more, if you really like this, please let Yellow Brick know like in the comments on instagram and stuff you want more webinars so we can bring on more students and just more opportunities like this um so yeah thank you so much you guys this was really awesome thank you so much for joining in there <laughs> i think <laughs> that's good enough right did i do it right yeah good yeah you did thanks you guys thank you so much for joining i hope to see you in the facebook page soon yeah. Have a great day. Have a great night. Program. Please enroll. We want to see you.